So you want some beans, but you don't want to worry about a trellis or vining or vining contraptions, then bush beans are for you. So stay tuned. Hey everybody, Alan Schaefer at Custom Garden Solutions. In today's exciting episode, we are going to plant some bush blue lake beans. It's in the middle of August and I just checked my freezer for beans and I have one more gallon of beans from last harvest, so it's time to plant some more. And before we go into the garden, a couple things that you want to consider. First of all, you want to grow your beans when the soil temperature is about 55 to 60 degrees. So I'm in zone 5B, just outside of Chicago right now, and it's mid-August, so it's, it's a good time to grow beans. You don't want to grow them real early in the season, you know, just after the first frost. You want to let the ground warm up a little bit before you plant beans. Uh, peas, on the other hand, are a little bit more forgiving and you can grow those a little easier in the season. And I'll draw some parallels in this conversation between peas and beans, because they are similar in a lot of ways, but they have some subtle differences. And although you want to start your plants when the soil temperature is warm enough, they will take a little cool temperature once they've already started producing and matured a little bit. So here in zone 5B, just outside of Chicago, they'll still grow in September and October. So I'm gonna be growing bush blue lake beans. Very common beans. I've had a lot of success with them. They taste great, they're good in salads, they taste great uh, steamed, uh, they freeze well, they hold well, they grow well, don't have a lot of problems. Here's what the uh, package looks like. It's just uh, kind of a king size package from Burpee and they're Bush Blue Lake Beans. I'll put a link down below for you so you can get these at Amazon. And my soil pH is around a 7.0 and that's right in the middle of being acidic which is below 7 and alkaline which is over 7 and my beans have done well for years there so I don't worry too much about the pH in the soil in a lot of things that I grow but particularly with beans. You don't want to add fertilizer where you're going to be growing your beans. If you add fertilizer, you're going to get too much foliage, too much uh, greenage, too much leaves, and not enough beans. Uh, my garden was 100% compost a couple years ago. I continually amend it with compost tea and rock dust and worm castings and uh, compost from my tumbler. In the fall, I'll put leaves from local trees and then, then I'll cover those leaves up for the winter with silage tarps and if you've not seen the episodes on silage tarp check those out because those are a difference maker and they make your life a lot easier and your garden a lot healthier. Beans are a nitrogen fixing plant. In a nutshell what that means is nitrogen fixing means that you can take nitrogen in the air that's in gas form and it's about 78 percent and make it available to the plants and ultimately your soil. Now we did an episode on this just a couple of weeks ago, a pretty detailed one, on uh, better beans and peas. Uh, then there's hyphen, nitrogen fixing your plants, something like that. I'll put a link to it down below. One will be probably popping up right here in a second. So you can check that out too, I highly recommend it. Now we're gonna do some planting. Before you start planting, you wanna make sure that your soil is nice and loose. This soil is tremendous. A lot of work's gone into it. And if you don't have a landscape rake, I highly recommend it. <laughs> just for jobs like this. So I'm able to just smooth this out. There's probably three or four inches of loose soil like this. And I'm just gonna put the beans in and press it down with my finger. And I also want the soil to be kind of even so that my irrigation system will water it equally. I've already prepared this area and I'm using this landscape rake here. But you want to have your soil nice and loose like it is here. So beans like a lot of sun. I put them in this area here in my garden. They get almost uh, a full day of sun. And I'm going to space my beans about a f nine inches to a foot apart and the rows will be about nine inches or a foot apart. I just kind of estimate it. 
don't follow the instructions on a seed packet. Uh, I do it works for me. I've done it for years. So we'll be going 9 to 12 inches and rows of 9 to 12 inches apart. So kind of like a grid of 9 to 12 inches. And like most plants, you want to keep your weeds down. Weeds are going to steal the nutrition that was meant for your plants. They're going to harbor insects and they can lead to disease. So I've soaked my beans in a rhizobium bacteria inoculant and that's going to help with the nitrogen fixing process and I only did it for about 20 minutes. Peas and beans are very similar but one difference is that peas can take a little bit longer of a soaking than beans can. If you soak the beans too long they're going to split and crack and you won't get good germination. I'm going to cover a pretty big area where I'm going to be growing today. I get a little carried away sometimes, but I'm going to be using these beans for freezing, for eating obviously right away, and for seed savings. So a little bit of beans go a long way. You may need only five, six, seven, eight plants to feed a family of three or four. Uh, each plant can give off you know, 50 to 100 beans easily, and they continue to harvest as long as you take care of them. So I'm just going to plant these. I don't want to be too close to the fence. I want to give them room to grow. About nine inches to a foot apart. And I just push them into the ground. Oh, dropped a couple. I'm not too worried about how lined up they are, how, how perfect everything is. These will emerge probably this time of year in about 10 days or so, maybe a little bit less because the temperatures are getting up to about 90. I guess the weatherman says they're going to, a little soil that doesn't want to go in. So. Uh, And I'll water these in lightly this evening here. It's getting dark again. You wouldn't be at a Custom Garden Solutions YouTube episode without it getting dark, now would you? Unfortunately, I take care of customers all day and quite often I'm left at the end of the day with not a lot of time to do my personal gardening, which is fine as long as it gets done. So I'll water this in lightly tonight and then tomorrow, somewhat early, I'll lightly water again. I don't like to heavily water these. I have had some problems, not recently, with, uh, believe it or not, with birds picking up, you know, digging in and eating the beans. If that's an issue, you could put some type of uh, netting over it until they start. They'll even go after it after the um, so 
They'll go after the first, you know, inch or so the plant is growing. I think it has to do with how dry the weather's been. All right, so that's enough for now. I'm gonna finish this area over here and uh, I've got a new sprinkler that I'm gonna use with my irrigation system that my friend Jim's been using and he, and he really likes. So we're trying something a little bit new with how we're gonna water these. And we'll show you that in an upcoming episode. Beans are one of my favorite vegetables to watch fruit. So once they've grown to about nine or 12 inches, you're gonna start seeing little flowers. And those little flowers are where the beans are gonna come from. And they're gonna start off like these tiny, thin little beans. And if you don't look closely, you're gonna miss it. And it's kind of like when a clown blows up one of those long balloons, it's kind of how they grow. So they're real thin and, you know, don't look like much, look almost like a tentacle or, or, or like a, a size of a string. And uh, then they start growing. And in a week or less, you're gonna have beans that are ready to pick. So when do you pick your beans? Now, it's really up to personal preference, but kind of a general rule is once they're a little bit bigger than a pencil in width, and that's when they're gonna be the most tender and the crispiest. If you let them go too hard, they get a little starchy and a little, little hard to eat. Um, so uh, just pick a few. You're going to have plenty of beans. Trust me, they grow like crazy. And try it, find out what your preference is, and then you know when to pick them. As with many crops and flowers, continual harvesting will lead to more production. By leaving the beans on the plant, it's a signal to the plant that it's reproduced and it doesn't need to produce anymore. By continually harvesting or picking your beans, you kind of trick the plant into thinking that it still needs to reproduce and it'll keep producing more beans. So it's very important with beans to keep on picking. So keep on picking your beans. I mean, with, with beans, when it rains, it pours. Once they start producing, they're gonna produce like crazy. And you really wanna come out about every two days with a big bucket and pick some beans. And by regularly picking your beans, you provide more energy to more foliage for more photosynthesis, for more plant growth, for more beans, for more harvesting. So keep picking those beans. Have I made that point yet? So last time I planted the beans and I lightly watered them in. And I woke up today to water them in a little bit again, lightly. And I noticed that the birds were kind of hanging around and it looks like they've been uh, moving some of the dirt around. So what I've done is I've taken this, it's actually a trellis, but it's made out of PVC and this plastic fencing. And I just zip tie it to the PVC. And these squares are about an inch and a half by two inches or two by two. I just lay it on these remnants of four by fours that I have. And it just covers up the about four by eight area where I, uh, planted the beans last night and I since watered it in. I don't normally have problems with the birds and it looks like they didn't uh, really get at many of the beans but it's really dry out and about once out of every four or five years I'll start to have some issues with the birds trying to eat some of the uh, seeds or beans or peas uh, even some of the small seedlings so not too much effort for me to go ahead and put this over it. I'll also do it when I grow anything else with seeds, uh, carrots coming up, radishes, kale, spinach, lettuce, those type of uh, vegetables. I'll just, I'll just cover it, doesn't take much time. In fact, I'll use this same contraption I've built here. And uh, it's been really dry here the last week or two. And I think that's one of the reasons the birds may be a little bit more active because they're not getting the water from their normal so sources. And I don't know what it is about how the birds, what, what do they have? Uh, X-ray vision, are they watching me from that birdhouse over there? Do they send out scouts and then when one finds something, they call the rest like, hey, 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 over here, I found something. I don't know. But uh, anyway, we're gonna be doing follow-up episodes on how the beans are progressing, when we pick them, how we cook them, how we freeze them, and what we do at the end of the season when the plants have run their course. So make, make sure you check out those episodes.
I'm Alan Schaefer at Custom Garden Solutions, our channel is all about helping you grow herbs and vegetables and all kinds of cool garden stuff so that you can live a healthier and happier life. If you're new to the channel and you want to learn all about growing herbs and vegetables and all kinds of cool garden stuff, then start today by subscribing. Hit the little subscribe button down there. I mean, it's free. <laughs> and uh, you can always unsubscribe, just hit the button again so it's not fatal, it's not final. And uh, once you've done that, hit that little notification bell. And what that'll do, it'll notify you whenever we release a new episode so you don't miss anything because you never know what I'm going to be doing next. 